Thank you, Rob, Carrie, and our praise team, and adult choir, and instrumentalists. What a, um, what a wonderful morning, and uh, I hope you've experienced the humbleness and the joy as I have this morning as we've uh, just lifted up our voices and our hearts to God. For that's what worship is all about. And we've just praised Jesus Christ for his, for his gift of salvation and, and for his gift of eternal life. And uh, that's what every Sunday is about, isn't it? We're so thankful for that. And our goal of worship is, is just that. It's, it's to praise God for his care. It's to praise God for his blessings that we just sang about, uh, that he bestows on us every day as we, as we work in his kingdom and, and as we wait his coming again to take us home. And this morning we're praising the Lord also for, for faith and, and the ministry of Willard and Nora that we've experienced over the last 10 years. And that's worthy of our worship and praise, too. And it's at anniversary moments like these that I think it's intriguing and, and I think it's very important for us to remember and to understand a minister's heart. I think it's uh, important to understand what, what motivates a person, a man or a woman, to, to give their life to full-time ministry. And what is, what is the motivation for a, a person to, to give years and years to a congregation that they don't know anything about in the beginning? That they've only met three, four, five, six people, and yet they come and they make their lives and they become intimately involved in that body of Christ in that location. Well, we're blessed that the Apostle Paul shares his heart as a minister of the gospel in Colossians. Rosemary read it to you a little bit earlier. And in that passage that was read today, Paul really, what he's doing is he's explaining or he's giving a defense of, of why he cares for and he ministers to this church even though he's never visited it. And he reaches out and he prays and he counsels them even as he writes this or dictates this, he's sitting in a prison cell and will never visit them. But yet he feels he's connected <clears throat> as any pastor that has been somewhere for 10 or 20 years. And as he shares with this congregation in Colossae, he, he gives us a glimpse into the heart of a minister. And, and uh, these are eternal truths that Paul writes down because the, the miraculous thing that we find through the centuries and through the millennia until we hit today is the same thing and the same truths that motivate Paul to minister to a congregation he's never known before, yet has such a heart for, is the same reasons that men and women are called today to ministry. And we need to pause and remind ourselves of that from time to time. To feel grateful for these that live with us. Let me share with you briefly. Don't worry, you got lunch coming, so you don't, you don't have to be in a hurry. <laughs> First of all, Paul says he ministers to churches because of his divine calling from the Lord. Back up to verse 24, I rejoice in what I'm suffering for you, and I fill up my flesh what is still lacking in regards to Christ's affliction for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. Paul ministered because he knew he had received a direct calling from Jesus to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Maybe the one, one of the most well-known callings, right? The Damascus Road, <laughs> the blinding, 
the receiving his sight and Ananias laying his hands on him and saying, God has a plan for you. He told me, I'm telling you. It's to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And that calling and that event, Paul never forgot. And it motivated him to preach and to work with many churches throughout the known world. And he preached through sufferings and despondencies and prison. And as Rob said, a peculiar church people. <laughs> but he kept going and he kept preaching and he kept ministering. And you know, God still calls men and women to full-time Christian ministry today. And when a someone, a young man, a young woman, an older man, an older woman, they come to me and say, I really feel God calling me to full-time Christian service, here's what I usually tell them right off the bat. I say, if, you know, I say, pursue that, pray about that, uh, learn about that, educate yourself about that. But here's the bottom line. If God is not calling you really, and you get into full-time Christian work in a church, you're going to be miserable because it's a tough thing. It's a lonely thing. But if God is calling you to full-time Christian service, to minister in whatever way, full-time, and you don't do it, you're going to be miserable <laughs> because you're not doing what God asks you to do, and rare is the person he calls to that. So be sure of your calling is what I tell them. Willard has been called or he's been ordained to Christian ministry. Willard, because of that call, came to Fairview 10 years ago because God called him. And you heard that call and brought him. Brad reminded me he's, he was on the personnel committee that brought Willard here. I think everybody else maybe is worships at River Club or somewhere else. So when you blame people today, blame Brad. <laughs> I, I wasn't here. <laughs> but Willard came um, because he sensed something. He, he sensed something here. He sensed that that this would be a place where he could minister. But more than that, Willard came because he had a direct call from Jesus Christ to minister, and he went where God told him to. And he invested himself, and he became a part of this church and this community, and he's made differences in your lives because he's been called by Jesus Christ to minister. That's why Paul did it, and that's why Willard did it. Second of all, Paul says he ministers, his minister heart, he tells us, because of his responsibility to make the word of God, to make the gospel known fully to everybody. The call to ministry gives a minister a laser focus for their purpose. And a minister that's been ordained to the gospel ministry of Jesus Christ, their laser focus, no matter if they're doing music or youth or children or education or preaching, the laser focus is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, of how men, women, boys, and girls can be saved. That's it. It's Paul's laser focus. It's Willard's laser focus. The, the purpose is to share the gospel and to see People of all ages come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. And Paul calls it that he's sharing the, the mystery, the mystery in verse 27, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And what is that mystery? Here it is in a nutshell. If you've been wondering yourself, the mystery is God created you, he created all that's around you, and he loves you, and all that he's created is perfect. There's no blemish on anything he created, including you. But we goofed it up. We messed it up, didn't we? The pain in our world, the suffering in our world, the hurt to our environment, however you want to look at it, we failed God, we sinned. And we got separated from him. But God looked down because he loved us so much. He wanted to rescue us. 
And to do that, he sent his only begotten son, perfect, here before creation and still here with us now to rescue us from ourselves, to rescue us from our sin. And that Jesus, the Son of God, died on the cross so that could happen. And that's what we sang about this morning, isn't it? And God raised him from the dead. That now all that, that have been separated from God and messed it up, we can ask for forgiveness and God who loves us will bring us back to him. Isn't that good news? And he restores us. He restores us in our life now. He restores us to eternal life later. And one day he's going to come back and he's going to make it all right. The earth and heaven will be one. That's the gospel message that Paul, that's the mystery that he was laser focused on preaching. That's the message that Willard is laser focused on preaching. And you know, music has just a special way to share the gospel. Music has a special way that words can't to reach to the heart, to help us understand what the Spirit is saying to us, to help us see our need for a Savior. Music moves us. It's why in here we probably could name ten different genres of music that you'd love to sing every week. Because it reaches your heart. But yet when worship's done right in any type of music and we see the people leading us and in your heart you swell with any style of music, we realize, realize music's not about us. It's about the Savior. I think of the hymn, Victory in Jesus, and how music moves us. And, you know, we, we, some of us that have been in church a long time, you know, just the way it starts, I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, and you can finish those words in your heart because it gives us the gospel message. When we sing it, we feel it. But the purpose is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what a pastor does. That's what Willard has done. And third, Paul's passion, the heart of a minister, is to see believers then become mature in Jesus Christ. Verse 28, he is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. Fully mature in Christ. That's the end goal. To this end, Paul says, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. And that's what a pastor who's ordained does. We strenuously, we strenuously contend with all the energy Christ has given to see people fully matured in Jesus Christ. And that's what Willard has done in your midst for 10 years. He's done everything you've asked of him. Begin new groups, lead music. You were without a pastor for a year and a half or more, and Willard stepped in and was even the interim pastor here and did a great job. And I tell you, nothing scares an incoming pastor than having someone on staff that's been the interim pastor. It can be a mess. But there was seamless transition because Willard's focus and Willard's goal is the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ and using the gifts God's giving him to do that. And I thank him for that. Just think of music education. Rosemary referred to the children and how they learn music, but how they learn the good news as they sing. And um, how many years he spent in vacation Bible school or children's musicals or working with teenagers or, you know, educating the choir. Guys like Steve that <clears throat> can't sing right all the time, like he said, and read music, you know. And uh, like me, I sing also. That's my part. And it's not very good also. But, um, you know, that music education, you're, you're not just learning notes and lyric and parts. You're, you're, you're learning the message of those songs. And um, you're growing in Christ with everything you hear and everything you sing. 
And being our worship leader week after week with all kinds of services, funerals, weddings, Sunday to Sunday, we want that music to reach our hearts. And Willard has given us that privilege of doing that. And he's given honor to Christ that Jesus deserves. So I think Paul's sense of a minister's heart and, and ministerial vocation, I think he, one thing he would say is that, you know, being a minister is just this wonderful balance between suffering and toil and privilege and joy. Yes, there's difficult times. Yes, there's diff times when people say, I don't like you, I don't like what you're doing. Um, are you crazy to do that? You know, who do you think you are? And humbly, his only response has been and can be, I'm a minister, I'm a slave to the gospel of Jesus Christ of which I'm called. And that answer should be sufficient. We're thankful. Thank you, Willard. <laughs> Thank you for your call, for hearing your call. Thank you for your labor for 10 years here at Fairview. And uh, as Rob and Carrie said, many years before that, in various churches across our state. We have one of the top five or top three ministers of music in all of Virginia. I want you to know that. You're very fortunate. <laughs> and uh, Willard, thank you most of all for your minister's heart. Uh, Paul's told us today what that is, what that minister's heart's all about. And... Um, I believe that, I know that, that, that you have it, and I thank you for that. Uh, it's little that we can do today to, to share our appreciation, but what we give back to you is uh, a body of Christ's heart to say thank you and, um, and to praise the Lord uh, for calling you to his service. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we just pray that you've been praised today, that you've been lifted up, and, and uh, Lord, you look down and you smile upon your servant, Willard, and you smile upon this congregation. And uh, Lord, may we continue to, to preach the gospel as one, as one body. May we continue to see others come to you as Lord and Savior. May we continue to, to see others mature in you. And Lord, may music be a big part of that. For you have given that to us as a gift. Lord, uh, we just uh, thank you. And we ask this prayer in your name, Jesus. Amen.